Hello everyone, this is a continuation from the previous video that I did a short period of time that was doing border effects with colors just around the outer edge of the border on the Commodore 64 screen. In this video I wanted to sort of extend that idea and just do it more generically around any box on the screen, anywhere on the screen, but still in a box shape. But at the same time, being able to change the direction of movement of the effect and perhaps play around with more colors into the effects. So in order to do that, I sketched out a little bit of my idea on a sheet of paper and I'll show that right here. And it's really kind of crude, and, but that's what got me going on, on the project. Translating from the paper to the computer, I had to create a set of variables in order to make this work. Now I've already taken the time to go ahead and write the program in the interest of saving time for everyone here. But in this video I wanted to go ahead and try to explain this program that I've written and then further optimize this so it might be even a little bit faster and more efficient. And then I'm going to go ahead and share with you some more effects that I've created using this program and just tweaking it. It's amazing what you can do sometimes just by tweaking your own program code. So before I wrote a single line of code, what I did was I created the variables here listed here at the bottom of the screen. And I'm going to go over those really quick with you. The idea is that we could have more than one effect going on the screen at the same time. And so we have a variable for the total number of effects to display on the screen. And right now I have the variable set to four. And now for each effect, so there's, there's four columns here for each of these variables. And so on the first one at the top here, we have the X minimum, the minimum X position, the minimum Y position. So I have a 10 and a one, the start maximum position. So it can go from 10 to 30, that's the max and then the Y max, so it can go from 1 to 14. There's a horizontal flag that indicates if the color is moving horizontally. 0 if it's moving horizontally, 1 if it's moving vertical. There's an effect direction, 0 if it's heading left, 1 if it's heading right. There's an up or down, which it could have been called vertical, so it's a 0 if it's heading down or 1 if it's heading up. There's a current X and a current Y position. So that's just saying where it is right now. The position currently for that effect is at this X position and at this Y position. And there's some assumptions here, but it needs to be in between the start X and the start X max position. So it has to be in, in between the minimum and maximum values. Then you have the current effect that's currently being operated on. And then these values here for the map offsets is just so we can display the color on the screen. At the top of the program, we there's a short loop here to draw in all the asterisks on the screen, because I'm just using the asterisks for the background character. Then there's a short program to move all of the effects once. So you have to move all of the effects, then have a delay, then move them again, then have a delay, etc. So what this does is there's a loop. It increments the current effect, compares it to the total number of effects. If it's not reached the total number of effects, then it goes ahead and moves the next item. If it has reached the total number of effects, it resets it back to zero. So all it is is a quick loop saying loop through all of the effects. And here's the move once. And what it's doing is saying, load the foreground color and place it onto the screen by, by calling this sub right here, place color. P put a delay in between and then put the background color. So we got the foreground color, the background color, and then I have a short sub that I called check XY. So what you need is something to change the direction once you hit the max. So if you're going all the way to the right, you're, you're moving on horizontally and you're moving all the way, you're incrementing the X value slowly until you hit the max X. At that point, you have to switch to the vertical position and then determine if you're going up or down. And that's all laid out in those variables at the bottom of the program. Then I have a, just a simple delay 
to, to waste cycles, and it tries to save the X and Y registers and preserve them. And the, uh, the sub that we used in the previous video to poke a color at the whatever's in the accumulator at position X comma Y, what this place color function here is doing is loading the current effect X and Y coordinates, and then it's calling the sub to place it on the screen at that X and Y position. The check X, Y is fairly simple. This is the program that keeps the, the effect within the boundaries of the parameters that were set by the variables at the bottom of the program. So what it does is it loads the current effect that we're working with, checks to see if we're moving in a horizontal direction. If we are, it jumps down to that horizontal section. If we're not, then it means we're operating on the vertical plane. Then it determines, are we moving up or down from the variables at the bottom of the program? If we're moving up, then we go to the up section. Otherwise, we stay in the down section. And all that's doing is incrementing the variables. So increment the current y position. If we're going down, we increment the current y position at comma x. Compare it to the max, max y value. If it's not equal, then we, we exit this part of the program. If it is equal, then when we hit the max position, now we switch from moving vertically to horizontally. And instead of going in a down position, the next time we're gonna go up. So we set that variable here. And then that's what we do on all four of these. It's pretty, pretty simple. It's just done four times. And so that's the whole program in a nutshell. And let's take a look at it. So what I notice here, I'm actually having four effects moving at the same time, or four things moving in a, in a box shape. One of the problems I notice is that you can barely see the, the shape that's moving around. And that plays into some of the decisions I make later into this, into this video. I decide that pretty much that was a neat idea for the previous video, but we're probably going to abandon that, that idea. But this is what got me started in the first place down this road. So the next thing I wanted to do was basically copy this code, create a new program. I'm going to call it generic border effect opt-opt -opt for optimize. What I wanted to do is create some macros to better optimize and then also to eliminate some of the jump subroutines. So what what you'll see is, for example, right here, I'm doing a JSR to move all. Don't need that to be there. Don't need the JSR. You can just remove, move this to another location, and it can, it can be within a macro if, ne if necessary. And then things like these two programs right here can be combined and made into a macro. So let's start. Let's just start there. So let's go ahead and there's no re reason to have this as a sub anymore. So I'm going to copy that out and just place it in line right here. And then you'll see we're, star we're storing this right here only to load it so that we can load it again down here. So you might as well just store it to, from, to begin with down there. And then we don't need to do this. And we don't need two RTS. So that's one quick optimization that we can make. Just eliminating a JSR eliminates some of the execution cycles and speeds up the program ever so slightly. And then what we can do to further optimize, we could take this place color one. 
it's being called in two places. So we can go ahead and make that a macro and, and rather than having the jump subs. So at that point, you're sacrificing program space for efficiency. So let's define a macro. End macro. And we don't really need to pass any parameters. And just come up here and get rid of the sub. Oops. And you compile that. And these are the types of optimizations that I did in, in, in the program. Nothing mind blowing. One other obvious thing that could be made into a, a quick macro is the, for each of these up, down, left, and right, we have we do the same thing. We compare it to the max. Branch if not equal, we we load a value and then we change these two two values. We do that for up, down, left, and right. And so that can be made into a quick macro. So that's what I went ahead here and did in the interest of saving time. I already went ahead and optimized most of the code, including the direction. I created a macro for direction, which was handling the up, down, left, and right. And there are now uh, four or one, two, three, four. There's now five parameters. So in this case, this isn't really improving efficiency so much as it is uh, just to tighten up the code a little um, to make it look a little more readable and as to contain fewer lines, I guess. But then in other places, I have removed where there, there's fewer subs, jump subs. So, so this is the optimized version. I'll put this up on the GitHub. And I'll show an example here momentarily. In this segment, I've decided to take the optimized version of this program that I've come up with and I'm going to tweak it and create a, a number of effects here. And I've already done that and I want to go over that here. The first one we'll run here, we kind of start, off, start from where we left off, but I reduced the number of effects down to one. So you can see it's, it's just a zooming around, a little uh, <laughs> color zooming around the, the outer edge of the border. And I sort of got tired of this effect. So. What I said was, you know, what if we just eliminate the foreground color and we just stick with the background color? But at the same time, let's increment that color every time it goes around, every time it, it, it runs in the loop. So let's see what that looks like. And I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. So, but it's going too slow, so let's speed that up. So we just come down to the, the delay section and modify the delay to make it faster. And so I was like, wow, that's pretty neat. So that's my first effect right here. And it's called all, all colors borders.asm. So in the next effect I wanted to demonstrate, what I did on this one was I said, what if, what if we wanted to take that previous effect, but instead of showing all 16 colors, we limit that to just in between, let's say two, like right here I have five and nine. Let's limit it to between those two and then see how that looks when it runs. And that came out pretty cool right there. And I saved this one. I saved that effect and I called it outer only. And But I wanted to extend that even further by say, what if I want to make it move left and right and have it kind of a rocking effect? And if I uncomment out this part of the code, that's what does the rocking effect. And it's kind of hard to see, but 
because of the color combinations, but it's actually kind of le ju ju it's kind of like rocking back and forth every so often. About every four or five moves, it switches directions. And so that's what I have called this one. I called this one rocking. And like I said, this was the, the, the outer only effect. Let's take a, a look at the one I saved. And then there's the both directions one. So this one further defines the outer only one, except I just changed the color combinations a little and I played with the delay, changed the delay a little. And right now I have it set to just one effect, to just demonstrate one, one effect on the screen at the same time. And what's really neat about this one is that it's an illusion. You can, it, depending upon how long you stare at it, it appears to go left or right. And that's pretty neat. And I think it, it helps to, if you upgrade, if you switch it to two effects going at the same time. So here you can really see it's, you can see the illusion left or right, depending upon how long you stare at it. So this effect here is called every other. And what that means was I, I, I just wanted every other internal box to be moving. So the outer edge one is moving, it skips this one, goes, and then the next one's moving, skips that one. So it's every other one is actually has an effect moving, including this, um, the one right around the middle. So that one's called uh, every other. And um, I don't think there's a delay on this. Yeah, oh yeah, there is a delay. So we can comment out the delay to see if it can go, see if it makes the effect any better. Yeah, it kind of does make, improve it, doesn't it? Yeah. Although it's just a, a mess of colors on the screen. But, and, and they're moving in, op each one's moving in opposite directions. You have on the bottom row, it's moving to the right. And the one above that's moving to the left. Above that's moving to the right. So that was what I called every other. Then on this one, I said, let's do all the colors on the screen. Let's do all effects, all boxes possible and then take out the delay and just go full speed. This is the non-optimized version and I'll show it next to the optimized version. So you can see the difference in speed if there is anything uh, noticeable. It's the same effect just with the optimized code. I think it's slightly faster in the optimized version, although it is sometimes hard to discern if they're not sitting next to each other. And then out of all of these, I think my favorite is the outer only. I think this is my favorite effect out of the bunch because it kind of was doing what I was trying to pull, a little bit of what I was trying to pull off in the last video. So anyway, that makes up the majority of this video. I thought it was interesting. I'll place all this um, source code up on my GitHub. And I was just playing around here and trying to have fun with all these effects. Just tweaking the code with minor tweaks to create these really neat effects. I thought, I thought they were neat anyway. So hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thanks for watching.